Welcome to 3D Tech Valley. In today's video, we're going to look at the history of 3D printing. So if you're a beginner in 3D printing, you want to watch this video to the very end because it will help you understand how the technologies work. And even if you have some experience in 3D printing, you still want to watch this video because at the end of it, we're going to touch on some new 3D printing technologies that you probably are not familiar with. Let's get started. This video does not claim to be scientific. Instead, take it as a small introduction to 3D printing technologies. In the early 1980s, new methods used in the production of parts began to develop. These methods were not based on the removal of material like is the case with traditional machining technologies. Instead, the new methods featured layer by layer addition of materials. Products were produced based on 3D models obtained from CAD software by adding materials in the form of plastic, ceramic, metal powders, and others. These materials were then bonded through thermal, diffusion, or adhesive methods. What does this mean? To put it simply, it became possible to create physical objects in a completely new way. The first person who patented this technology was Chuck Hull back in 1984. Hull also created 3D systems in 1986 and the company is still one of the industry leaders today. The first commercial 3D printer, the 3D Systems SLA-1, was introduced in 1987. And with that introduction, let's look at the types of 3D printing technologies. To start off, we are going to look at possibly the most promising 3D printing technology, and that is photopolymer resin printing. Initially, the technology was called SLA, but over time, this name has turned out not to be entirely correct. Photopolymer 3D printing involves the hardening of a liquid photopolymer resin under the influence of light to form a 3D model. Initially, a laser acted as a light source and the technology was called SLA or stereolithography. Despite its apparent simplicity, 3D systems spent over 10 years to bring the first fully-fledged commercial product to market. This required shifts in other technological products such as solid-state lasers which use solid-state substance as the active medium. Without going deep into the technological jungle, we can say that it took about 25 years of gradual development for this technology to be mass adopted. By 2013, SLA 3D printers cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and are available only to large companies. Moreover, their usage was also very limited due to their high cost as well as expensive materials. And then in 2011, a startup called Formlabs reimagined Chuck Hull's idea and developed the first desktop SLA 3D printer. The printer was unveiled in the market at a price of $3,000. This low-cost printer made it possible for many consumers to get started in 3D printing. Over the years, Formlabs has delivered tens of thousands of printers to the market. The company became the first unicorn in 3D printing with a market capitalization value of over $1 billion. This story marks one of the two turning points in the breakthrough made in 3D printing technologies in recent years. However, other companies were also doing research and development. Some companies realized that using a laser as a light source for eliminating a photopolymer resin was not the only solution. They experimented with another way of forming a model. This method was named DLP or Digital Light Processing. Without going into the technical details, the advantages of this technology lie in high productivity due to illumination of the entire layer at once. This is in contrast to laser, which must physically illuminate the entire model, 
which means the model must be constantly moved. It is easy to explain this 3D printing technology with a simple example. Let's say you want to print a ring. This task will take about the same time on both an SLA and DLP 3D printer. However, if you need to print 10 rings at once, DLP technology will have an advantage because you can print all the rings at the same time. On the other hand, an SLA 3D printer will spend a certain amount of time printing each ring one at a time, although their quality will be much higher. Let's look at some numbers. The Form 2 SLA 3D printer takes about 11 hours and 22 minutes to print 55 ring models. This means that each ring prints in 12.4 minutes. Compare that to the Unit Slash Plus 3D printer, which is based on DLP technology. This printer only takes 3 hours and 51 minutes to print 60 rings. Basically, each ring is printed in just 3.8 minutes. DLP technology started gaining popularity and began to compete with the traditional SLA 3D printer. However, before it became mainstream, a new revolution happened. LCD 3D printers appeared on the scene. LCD 3D printing technology makes printing 3D models even simpler. With this technology, a powerful LED lamp, which is reinforced by a lens system, shines on an LCD matrix. The matrix then projects the desired image onto a bath with resin, where the 3D model is formed. When this technology was perfected in 2016, the price of 3D printers reduced by 10 times compared to the heat from Labs Form 2 printer of that time. The price of budget LCD 3D printers started at about $300. This dramatic cost reduction has significantly expanded the range of buyers and has given home users and small print studios the opportunity to try this technology for their needs. But, apart from the price, what advantages does LCD 3D printing technology have over the others? LCDs, just like DLP printers, light up the layer immediately. This gives them a performance advantage. However, initially the quality of models produced by these printers was not very good. But then in 2019, 3D printers with a 2K LCD matrix were introduced. These were followed later by those with 4K matrix. The 2K and 4K LCD 3D printers solved the problem of low quality prints. Today, LCD printers surpass both DLP and SLA in terms of print speed and minimum layer thickness. Some good examples of printers with 2K resolution include the Eligumas, Enucubic Photon S, OneHow GR1, Frozen Shuffle Lite, Frozen Shuffle 2019, Frozen Shuffle XL 2019, Frozen Sonic, and more. For 4K resolution, we have Frozen Shuffle 4K and Frozen Transform. The introduction of 8K matrices, as well as the use of special monochrome matrices that increase printing speed, have made the technology dominant in the 3D printing market. A good example of an LCD 3D printer with 8K matrix is the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K. And that is the differences between these 3D printing technologies. Now, at this juncture, we are going to discuss why SLA, DLP, and SLD 3D printing are so popular. But before we begin, we have to divide 3D printers into two. We have industrial 3D printers and desktop 3D printers. Industrial 3D printers are mainly used for large-scale prototyping, as well as small batch production and casting molds. With a fairly high productivity and good quality end products, these units are used in the automotive and aerospace industries. The printers are also used for printing massive objects, such as this mammoth bone that was printed by Materialize in cooperation with the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences in Brussels. Desktop SLA, DLP and LCD 3D printers have become widespread and are mainly used in dentistry, jewelry making, shipping industry, 
and aircraft modeling. These printers are also used in the manufacture of unique gifts and souvenirs. High detail and high quality finishing surface makes this 3D printing technology excellent for solving many problems that previously had to be solved in much more time consuming and expensive ways. The second father of 3D printing is S. Scott Crump. In 1988, Crump patented the FDM Fused Deposit Modeling Technology. The next year, together with his wife, he created Stratasys, which is still one of the leading 3D printer manufacturing companies. The abbreviation FFF, which stands for Fused Filament Fabrication, is often used to refer to this technology. However, don't let this mislead you. The essence of the technologies is the same, but the names are different in order to avoid patent disputes. So, what did Crump really invent? In FDM technology, the idea is that the filament is fed into an extruder where it melts at a high temperature and forms a model in layers through a small nozzle. Based on this invention, Stratasys began to produce industrial 3D printers. The printers were mainly used in the same way as the first SLA machines. Their applications were mainly in the automotive and aerospace industries, the advent of various durable types of plastics such as PC, PIC, PEI, PPSF and others. The printers were mainly used for functional prototyping. FDM technology did not become widespread until more than 20 years later when RepRap project appears. RepRap stands for Replicating Rapid Prototyper. This is a self-replicating mechanism for rapid prototyping. The original idea of RepRap was to create a 3D printer that could be printed by another 3D printer. In this photo, all the plastic parts of the child printer are printed on the parent printer. Well, something completely different happened. A group of enthusiasts were able to create a budget 3D printer for home or office use using RepRap technology. The idea was quickly picked up by three New York geeks who formed MakerBot and commercialized desktop FDM 3D printers. This was the second turning point in the modern history of 3D printing. The cost of MakerBot FDM 3D printers was about $1,000. This price was quite affordable for many 3D printing enthusiasts and technologists who are passionate about the idea of 3D printing. In 2013, MakerBot was acquired by Stratasys for a record $400 million. The result of all this was that the world received a very interesting technology for creating physical objects. One big advantage of FDM technology is its low cost and a large selection of printing materials to use. The materials began to appear in large quantities after the spread of 3D printing. FDM printers primarily spread among home users who began numerous experiments with printing at home. Apart from this, the printing technology has found its main professional application in prototyping. Once 3D printed in this process, it will never be the same again. Prototyping has become significantly cheaper and faster. This has enabled engineers to try many ideas to create high-quality and detailed products. They also active attempts to introduce FDM 3D printing into small-scale production. This attempt was seen during the COVID-19 pandemic when doctors urgently needed to produce spare parts for ventilators as well as mask holders for doctors who are forced to spend the whole days wearing them. FDM 3D printing was able to fully demonstrate its main advantages compared to classic production. Its advantages were fast modeling of new parts and launching them into a series in the shortest time possible, usually in less than a day. Another major advantage of FDM printing is the wide variety of materials that are available for printing. The materials range from biodegradable PLA to PIC that can be sterilized at high temperature and pressure. In the near future, we expect the widespread introduction of the so-called 3D printing firms which will be able to implement the concept of flexible production. In flexible production, a firm can produce any available product and not specialize in the manufacture of any specific products as happens in classic production. 
Today, you can print spare parts for old models of railway cars, and tomorrow, holders of medical masks or souvenir caps for competition winners. And that is a brief history of 3D printing. If you're interested in learning more about 3D printing technologies, check the next video where we dive deeper into technologies such as selective laser melting, electronic beam melting, selective laser sintering, multi-jet fusion, polyjet technology, multi-jet modeling, among others. Let us know what you think about this video in the comment section, and if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel so that you get notified whenever you're posting new content.